Shiny hunting in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is absolutely insane. So today, I'm going to attempt to complete the Paldean Gen 9 Shiny decks. Essentially meaning, I need to get at least one of every single Shiny Pokemon new to Generation 9. This may seem like an impossible challenge, but that's not going to stop me. So sit back and enjoy this crazy journey to get every new Shiny from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Jumping right into the action, I started hunting for a shiny Capsicid and managed to get him in roughly two and a half hours. That's actually much longer than average for being in an outbreak with the shiny charm, but totally worth it because his shiny makes him look like a baby chicken with a cracked egg on his head. Basically, how we're going to track what shinies we have is using this graphic I found online. So we tick off Capsicid, and if you didn't know, I actually did a 24 hour shiny hunting video recently, which did absolutely amazing. Thank you all so much. In there, I got a bunch of new Gen 9 shinies. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I highly advise you check that out first. But that meant we had an abundance of things that we could tick off because there's already proof I've caught them before. Wow, even with that, I still need to get 74 unique shinies in this video to complete the Gen 9 shiny decks. We've got a long journey ahead of us. Next, I decided to go to a Varum outbreak, and I was a little worried about hunting this one because Varum is... <gasps> oh my god, is that a shiny Pornyard? Let's go! That's actually perfect because Bishop gets a new evolution this game, that being King Ambit. Such an amazing new Pokemon with such a cool shiny. Just look at this beast. Anyways, as I was saying, I was worried about hunting Varum because they zoom all over the place and constantly bump into you and I can just get so annoying. What is my luck? Both of those shinies were found in just four minutes after entering the outbreak. That hunt literally couldn't have gone any better. Next, I hunted for a small oak, which is a shiny that doesn't change a whole lot, but one I still really like. It turns the olive on its head from green to black, and we managed to find it in around half an hour. Very cool. I then went on to hunt an internet favorite, Haldean Wooper. I actually ended up finding him pretty quickly as well, which I'm definitely happy about, because just look at him. Absolute perfection. He must be protected at all costs. One subscribe equals one happy Wooper. I then decided to do a bit of a bulk evolution session of all the things I already had so far. This allowed us to get Clodzire, Oinkalone, Scovillain, Pormot, Dolov, Arbolova, Glamora, Dashbun, Reverum, and Seraledge. And that actually helped tick off quite a lot of shinies, which is good. Now, I didn't mention this earlier, but unfortunately, this game does have a couple of shiny locks, and they include the six legendaries and the Gimme Ghoul line. This really sucks because all the legendary shinies are amazing, especially Chi Yu and Karaidons. Oh my god, they're so good. But I guess I can't really complain because this saves me doing six legendary shiny hunts. They're just gonna have to be marked as unobtainable, sadly. My next hunt was for Bombardia, a very subtle shiny that just takes away all of its color, but one I definitely like. It took around 45 minutes to find, and then I managed to find a Frigabax outbreak. I was super hyped about this one, seeing as he's the baby pseudo legendary for this region. It was a little hard to find him because he doesn't change that much, and sometimes the snowstorms would distort my view. However, we eventually got him and instantly evolved him into Arctabax and then into Bax Caliber. He's just so cool, I love him. Next, I went to hunt for a shiny Pokemon I already have, and that would be Veluza. That's because I decided to make a rule for this video. If I had a Gen 9 shiny Pokemon already, like Veluza, but didn't have the footage of me finding it to show you, I'd have to re-hunt it for the video as proof of me actually getting it. There's quite a few Pokemon I'll have to hunt a second time because of this, but that's okay. Although, I do actually have footage of two shinies I found a while ago, and haven't really been showcased in a video yet. And that would be the amazing S-tier shiny cloth. Absolute perfection right here, probably in my top 10 favorite shinies of all time. And I also found this shiny Primeape, who I evolved into Annihilate. Anyways, like I said, I needed to hunt for Veluza again. And oh my god. If you're ever gonna hunt Veluza, you're either gonna give up instantly, or have to withstand the patience of a god. I'm sure everyone is aware that Veluza sucks in the wild. He's aggressive, he's crazy fast, he's in water which is unreasonably laggy in this game, and it's already annoying just dealing with one or two of them. However, in an outbreak, you've got like 15 of them all trying to maul you to death at once, and trying to KO 60 of them for the best possible shiny odds will probably take longer than the actual hunt. That would be if I were to hunt in a spot like this with no land. However, I managed to find the perfect spot to hunt the loser. Basically, I was lucky enough to find an outbreak right here on this island, and it's just so good. Basically, all I need to do is glide over a horde of Veluza to get their attention, come back to the island, the Veluza will dart towards me, I send out a Pokemon to get the kills, and repeat. Because they can't go on land, there is absolutely no issues anymore. It's just perfect. If you want a shiny Veluza but 
but don't want to deal with the pain, try getting Outbreak in this spot. Oh, and that is a shiny red Gyarados. Not one that helps our Paldean shiny decks, but an absolute beast who I'll definitely take. Oh, and guess what? The shiny Veluza popped up two minutes later before I even finished getting the 60 KOs. Let's go. I soon found a Charcadet Outbreak, and although I've already got a shiny of him and Seraledge, I actually wanted another one to evolve him into another Seraledge for a reason I'll explain in a moment. My luck must have been crazy at the time because the amazing blue-eyed cadet spawned in only three minutes. After evolving him into my favorite Gen 9 Pokemon, who unfortunately has one of the most disappointing shinies ever, I went online to look to trade it for a shiny Armourouge. This is because he's a Scarlet exclusive and my Seraledge is a Violet exclusive. It didn't take long to find a candidate because Seraledge is super good for raids and a fan favorite Pokemon. Our next hunt was for a shiny Bramblin, who only took around 30 minutes. To evolve him, you just have to walk around with him for a thousand steps, so we did so and he evolved into Bramblegast. Here's another quick look at our dex progress. Only 42 Pokemon remain. Although we've ticked off a bunch of them so quickly, things will be getting a lot harder later on. I was now in the mood to do some Paradox Pokemon shiny hunting. For those who don't know, Paradox Pokemon can't be in Outbreaks, so the best way to hunt them is to make a sandwich that'll boost both the shiny rates and the spawn rates for the type of the Pokemon you're hunting. My first target was Iron Thorns, the new Mecha Godzilla version of Tyranitar. So I made a sandwich that would boost those two things for electric types, and upon arriving at this location, the top and the bottom of this hill were exclusively spawning Iron Thorns. Luckily, this was also a really quick hunt because he was found in only five minutes. What an absolutely amazing looking shiny for such a cool new Paradox Pokemon. Definitely one of my favorite ones. Since that went by so quickly, I then moved on to Iron Bundle. This one took a little longer, but that wasn't an issue because I actually had a bunch of space to run around and hunt him, unlike Iron Thorns who had a much smaller spawn zone. We were just getting shinies left, right, and center. I've heard a bunch of people say it's not fun having shinies being so easy to get now, but personally, I love it. I don't have to waste literal days of my life anymore for a shiny I want, and I still value these easy to get shinies as much as the ones I'd spend 30 hours to get in other games. It also means I get to do crazy videos like this, and if you're enjoying it too, don't forget to subscribe. I recently hit 40,000 subscribers, which is just so cool, and means I'm almost halfway to getting the silver YouTube play button. Okay, we've got to rapid fire a couple of easy shinies before we get into some of the crazy stuff. I spent around an hour hunting for the beautiful shiny Tarantula, because I actually got his evolution in the 24 hour video. And then I moved on to the Afro Bird Squawkabilly, which only took around 20 minutes after entering the outbreak. Next, I hunted for a Nimble, which I was pretty worried about seeing how tiny they are, but the shiny is so noticeable and cool that it would be pretty hard to miss. We then evolved him into Lockix, and whilst I was hunting the Nimble, a shiny Mudbray appeared. Not a Pokemon I'm crazy about, but a shiny I absolutely love. I've also been dying to get a shiny Tatsugiri. However, they always have outbreaks in water, which is just not a fun place to do hunts. But luckily, I found one that was on land. For those who don't know, Tatsugiri has three different forms, and each form actually has its own shiny, which is so cool. Oh, I can't wait for the day where I have all six different colors, and I can recreate that adorable Twitter video of them all flopping around. This outbreak happened to be the curly form, and after 55 minutes of hunting, I bumped into another shiny that doesn't help us, but one that I really wanted anyways, the amazing blue gulpin. Only 10 minutes had to pass before the soy sourced up sushi fish got added to my collection. One day I'll get the other two. Okay, so our next hunt was pretty interesting. It was the hunt for a shiny Dunsparce. Now Dunsparce of course isn't new, but his evolution to Dunsparce is. And what is going on? He was found in just six minutes. Basically, what's interesting about him is that when you evolve him, there is a 1% chance that the Dunsparce has three segments on his body instead of the regular two. If I managed to get the one in 100 shiny three segment the Dunsparce, I would have one of the rarest shiny Pokemon ever. Yeah, what did you expect? Next, it was time to hunt for one of the hardest to spot shinies in Scarlet and Violet, Shiny Tandem House. Here is the regular, and here is the shiny. Yeah, not the easiest thing to notice. Oh, and did I mention this Pokemon is tiny? Basically, I had to check every single Tandem Mouse in this outbreak as closely as possible to try and identify that its extremely light blue shirt and pants have turned into an extremely light yellow. I was hoping since I kept getting shinies in like 10 to 20 minutes, it'd be the same case here, so I didn't have to strain my eyes for too long. But but no, it ended up taking two hours, which I actually can't really complain about. With how hard it is to spot, I'm actually really satisfied with that length, because I've done regular easy hunts which have taken much longer than that. We then gave them some privacy and shoved them into the boxes to have sex and evolve. No, I'm not kidding, that is literally how they evolve. And like the Dedunspass, there's also a 1% chance of them being a family of three instead of four. Of course, we didn't luck out and got the family of four, but I'm still so glad I can tick this one off. All right, this next hunt was the result of all of my good 
luck being used up. The hunt for shiny Flamigo. Okay, for starters, it took me forever to find an outbreak of him. And unfortunately, the one I did find never had a consistent way to get a good spawn distribution. But I wasn't going to find another outbreak because it already took forever to get this one. For those who remember my Dondozo hunt for the 24 hour video, it was kind of like that one as well, where I was just getting a bunch of shinies I wasn't looking for. 30 minutes went by and we were greeted by another shiny Paldean Whooper. Okay, absolutely no complaints there. Love this little guy. Another 30 minutes went by. A shiny Krogunk. Eh, okay. One I don't have in this game yet, but I'd love that shiny Flamigo now, please. Three more hours went by. Nothing. What was going on? I was four hours into this outbreak and I just couldn't find a single... You're f***ing kidding me. No, 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 no. That wasn't the shiny. I'm just imagining things, right? <sighs> Nope, that was the shiny who literally spawned for like half a second and just despawned. Why? I wasn't even that far away from it. Another half an hour went by and we got a bloody blue Psyduck. Please just give me the stupid shiny flamingo. My wish was finally granted another hour later. It took roughly five and a half hours to get this stupid bird. But little did I know at the time, those would be rookie numbers for something I'll be hunting soon. But to make up for that pain, I think I might have set the world record for the fastest shiny hunt of all time. Basically, I was looking for a shiny Gravid, and literally, as soon as I stepped foot in the outbreak, before I could even get a single KO on one of them, the amazing yellow ghost dog came and cheered me up. <laughs> and we then evolved him into Houndstone. Next, I hunted for a Watchroll, and in the process, I actually found a shiny Meryl, which I was super happy with, and then a shiny Summer Form Deerling two minutes later. The shiny Watchroll then appeared after around an hour, and I evolved him into Killer Watchroll. We were almost done with the basic easy stuff. Only a few more outbreak hunts remained. The hardest part for a while was actually just finding the outbreaks of things I was looking for. I managed to find a Giraffe Egg outbreak, and we eventually found the Blue-Nosed Giraffe, so we could evolve him into Furigiraffe. After what felt like an entire lifetime, I then managed to find a Wiggler outbreak. This actually took me over three hours to find. No, I am not exaggerating, but it's totally worth it because he's one of my new favorite shinies. So we then evolved into Wug Trio. I then did a hunt for shiny Shrudel, which I was pretty hyped about because of his evolution. He wasn't too hard to find, and we could then evolve him into the crazy but really cool looking shiny Grafai Eye. Rello was up next, and he actually has such a unique shiny. As far as I'm aware, he is the only Pokemon to get brand new textures in its shiny form because it turns his little ball of dung into pure gold, which is just so cool. We then took a thousand steps with him and he evolved into Rabska. It was now time for our final outbreak shiny hunt. That would be for a shiny Mastiff. Now, I already got this one in my 24 hour shiny hunting video. However, the footage got corrupted. So I edited an image of a shiny over a regular Mastiff just to show the viewers what it would have looked like. I even had text on the screen saying this, but for some reason, you wouldn't believe the amount of comments I got trying to expose me saying it was fake and that I didn't get the shiny, despite me literally saying right here on screen why the footage was edited. You literally see me wonder trader at the end of the video too. Like what reason would I have to fake this shiny seeing how easy they are to get? Anyways, we needed to get another one due to me wonder trading it away and we don't have a shiny Mabistiff yet. There, you happy now? Not fake. After evolving him, here's what our checklist looks like. All we have left is the shiny starters, the Scarlet exclusive Paradox Pokemon and three more Violet Paradoxes. We've begun with the starters. So shiny hunting starters is the same in pretty much every Pokemon game. The best possible way to do it is to hatch eggs by breeding them with a ditto from a foreign region with the shiny charm. This is known as the Masuda method, and I hate it. Ever since Legends Arceus and Scarlet and Violet, I never ever want to go back to doing egg hunting because I just find it incredibly boring. It just takes so long, and not to mention that's what contributed to like 80% of my Pokemon Sword playtime, so I'm just so sick of it. The rate is roughly 1 in 500, however, you'll soon see the odds were not in my favor. I'm not going to go into the details of Masuda hunting in Scarlet and Violet, but for a rough average, you'll probably only get 50 to 60 eggs hatched per hour with the best possible setup. That is not a lot. With me needing three shiny starters with a 1 in 500 chance and only hatching around 60 eggs an hour, it's projected to take me over 25 hours. That is a long time doing hunts that I find extremely boring. However, 25 hours doesn't even scratch the surface of my hunt. Now this giant starter hunt was bad enough as is. However, I would keep on getting these weird glitches which are funny to look back on now, but at the time I was just like oh my god stop I'm so sick of this hunt already let it end and I also ended up getting two game crashes for whatever reason which really pissed me off but eventually I actually managed to get the amazing shiny Sprigatito in 440 eggs I was so happy to get this because those 400 eggs took around eight hours it felt like torture at the time but oh I wish the other two shinies only came in eight hours eight hours would have felt like a miracle all right here's how it went I was already 
already so sick and burnt out on egg hunting because it's just not fun for me at all. I eventually hatched another 500 eggs. No shiny. I was basically over odds. So surely I was due for another shiny soon, right? Another 500 eggs went by. Nope. Absolutely no shine in sight. Another 500 eggs went by. Nothing. I ended up going to 1,852 eggs hatched and still absolutely nothing at all. Since the shiny Sprigatito, I had spent over 32 hours looking for another shiny starter with literally no luck at all. I was at it all week and just couldn't do it anymore. I was done. There was literally a 97% chance I should have found another shiny by then. So what was I going to do? Trading! Basically, I entered multiple Pokemon Discord servers in the hunt to trade away any of my shinies for these stupid unhatchable shiny starters. It took a while, but I eventually found people willing to take some of my offers. I got rid of one of my shiny Velusas for a Foy Coco, which is definitely a reasonable trade, I think, and a shiny Riolu for a Quaxly, which actually feels like a steal on my end. God, I wish I just traded from the beginning. I then spent around four hours hunting for the final shiny Paradox Pokemon from Violet, those being Iron Treads, Iron Moth, and Iron Jugulus. All that was left now were the Scarlet exclusive Paradox Pokemon. Now, the only way for me to encounter Scarlet Paradox Pokemon is by me going into a friend's Scarlet world and having them spawn the Pokemon, meaning technically they need to find the shiny and then I'd come in and catch it. However, that is literally just me stealing shinies from people and requires someone else to do the hunting for me. So I think we're just going to have to go with the trading technique. Over the course of around two days, I was constantly looking for people to help me complete the Scarlet shinies by offering up random things in my collection I was willing to give away to complete the challenge. And eventually, we actually managed to score them all. And I was actually pretty satisfied with all the trades. I didn't really give away anything I really wanted to keep. And with that, all that was left on our list was to evolve the shiny starters. We evolved Fuey Coco into Crocolore, then into Skeledurge, then Quaxly into Quaxwell and Quaquavel. And finally, I started my Pokemon Violet journey with this adorable little weed cat. And now we were about to complete the Gen 9 shiny decks by evolving the shiny version we hatched. It became a Floragato and then a Meowscarada. And our challenge was finally complete. I actually cannot believe I was able to pull this off. I now have around 220 hours clocked onto this game and I enjoyed every minute of it. And I'm so happy I was able to find every Paldean shiny. Don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more really fun and exciting Pokemon Scarlet and Violet videos. And thank you all so, so much for watching.